So we begin unit three on systems equations. Let's take a look at this short unit. I guess starting with the question, what's a system? Okay. System is going to be when you have two or more equations that you're trying to find points that they have in common. Okay, in a word, intersection. Where do they intersect? Okay. And we're going to get four methods, three of which you should already know since algebra one. Anyone remember any? Solving a system, four methods. You should know three of them. One of them starts with S. Know? Substitution. Oh, we'll do graph first. Sorry. Substitution, graphing, and one called like linear combination has many names. Anyway, you could graph two equations and find out where they intersect. I'm going to call that one of the calculator ways to do this. There's going to be two calculator and two without. And you're going to have to get good at at least one of each. Okay, one without, one with. So this is a calculator one. Okay. Substitution which seems to be a favorite, not my favorite, but it's, okay. and you're looking for something that has a one X or a one Y usually to do substitution. The third one you should already know has many names. I've heard it called linear combination or elimination. I've heard it called addition methods, multiplication methods. When you see it, you'll recognize it. All right, so those are the big three you've known for a couple years already. And the new one I'm teaching you today, because you're a high flying honors group, is using the matrix. Matrices, something called R ref of matrix A. Okay, R ref. Let me go nerd on you here a minute. Row reduction echelon formula. You don't have to know that. Okay, but anyway, two of these are going to be calculator. And these ones you're going to have to do by hand. Okay, do one problem over and over and over four different ways. All right. Okay, so here it is. Our problem of the day. There's your system. Copy it down. And I guess let's go graphing method. Would you do this without a calculator? Yeah, but this is definitely a good one for the calculator. All right, what do you have to do to any of these before they're ready to put in the calculator? They got to say what? Y equals. So this is going in Y1. This is going in Y2. Do that now. Okay, and when you press graph, what do you see? Two what's? 
two lines for our and do they intersect? Yes. Yeah. So how are we going to find it? All right. Remember that magic button from the test you just took? The second trace button? Hit that, and what's going to be the magic one today, this chapter, this unit? Five. Number five, intersection. Okay. So you're going to hit five. <laughs> And then turn, 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 turn. What's the answer? Look at your calculator. It's too small to see mine. <laughs> Error is not the answer. What is it? Um, three. Four comma three. And to write it in for full credit, it needs to look like that. So that's how you do graphing method. Plug them into the kukulata and do second trace, do it again just so you see it. Second trace, number five is intersect. And then what? Enter, enter, enter. Yeah. Good enough? Good enough? Okay, so that was graphing method. Nothing wrong with that. Okay, especially when we get to where they're not lines, but like a parabola in a line, let me show you one of those just so you can see it. Plug this one in. Okay. So you got a what? We just got out of this chapter. What's this first one? What shape? Parabola that went which way? Five? Up. up five and flipped. So you should be looking at an upside down parabola. And then what's plain old y equals two? Kind of line, is that horizontal or vertical? If it y equals, it just went through the y axis, so that's where it's on. Anyway, plug those in. I will do likewise. And you go ahead and practice your second trace intersect, enter, enter, enter. And give me, give me what, two answers, I think, right? Negative. There's your picture. Anybody on a struggle bus putting this in? When you put in negative, because for some reason they don't like the use the minus, you gotta use this guy. It's the it doesn't recognize the other words. Yeah, work with me. Teach me what I gotta do here. Second, praise. Five. Five. Now, the enter, enter, enter thing is going to be a problem here because we got how many answers? How many intersections? Two of them. So this time you actually have to move the X to the one you want to find uh, using which arrows? Side to side. Side to side. All right. Some of you are like, well, why can't we use the up, down? Watch the X. When I hit up, down arrows, does it go anywhere? Okay. It changes from the parabola to the line, but it doesn't really move where I want it to move. That's why you got to use the sideways. All right, sideways. And yeah, it looks like I'm going to try and find this one here. Enter, enter, enter. Okay. And our first one is, remember my rule, one decimal place. So what is that answer right there? One point seven seven comma 
two. And I'll bet you dollars to donuts the ne the other one's negative one point seven two, but we got a calculator. So what do I do again? Second trace intersect. Now slide that thing over to the other zero you're trying to find. Snuff, enter, enter, enter. Shown up negative 1.7, comma, 2. Please round properly for your full credit. Right. Graphing method, you have the method down. Hope so. Okay. All right. So, graphing method done. One down, three to go. Yes, sir. That sounds like operator error there. You put something in wrong. I'll come help you guys after the show. Okay. Anyway. Now we're going to do the one we did first, the 4x minus 13, 2x minus 5. We're going to do this one by hand now. So, do you have a favorite? Doesn't matter me. Substitution or linear combo? We're going to do it both ways. All right. So, what does it say about substitution? You're looking for what? <clears throat> 1x or 1y? What if you don't see that? You could still do substitution, but it's a little harder. So, let's look at our problem. Okay. Do you see a 1y? Yes. Okay. So do you remember how to do substitutions? If you're going to pick a 1x or a 1y, you're going to do this. You're going to say, okay, you're the coach, and y is your quarterback not playing too well. But what does equal mean? Same. So the guy on the other side is quarterback, too. And you're going to substitute this one into the game in place of Y. All right, so Y is gone. Sorry. Hit the bench. And this one's going in four. Okay, Y is equal to 2X minus 5. Now solve it like it's day one out of one. Now the answer was 4 comma 3. But go ahead and solve this. And find what x equals. It better be four, I guess. Yeah, how do I solve for X? Let's get the X's on one side, the numbers on the other. Who you want to move? I'm going to move the 2X over here yeah, and also move the 13, 13 over here. And you can do that in one step like that. What does that leave you with? 8 equals 2X. And when you divide, what do you got? X equals four now don't jump up and down you got half an answer okay remember your answer needs to look like this okay so now that x equals four how do you find y plug it in plug it in go up here and plug it in for x anywhere you like how about that so what's double four Mm -hmm. Plug in a four. What's two times four? Eight. Eight, Eight minus five is three. And that's how you find the actual answer. Okay. 
So substitution, not new to you. You've been doing this for three years now. Okay. And if you like it, use it. If not, we got one more method we could use. Okay. What other substitution could I have made? Do what? I could say y equals what up here. What? So I could put that in, and do you see it's the exact same problem you just did? Okay. So as long as you've got a one x or one y, two to go. Yeah. Two down, two to go. Substitution. All right, and a lot of people like substitution. Good for you. You can use, for me, this is my jam. Number three, I love linear combo elimination, whatever you want to call it. And what does it have to usually look like before I can use that method? I got to have X and Y on the same side. Okay, so what I did was I moved Y over here by doing what? Yeah. So now I got, and you can do this kind of in your head. Okay. So I need X and Y together, and I need that 13 over here. How do I move that? 13 over here. Okay. All right. So I did that. And I did the same thing for Y equals 2X minus 5. Okay, so this is for use when you have X and Y on the same side already. Okay, so this is the exact same problem. You see what I mean? This one is not ready for substitution until you make it say one Y equals. So you could do it, but it's not ready right now. Okay. Now, do you remember this? Your goal is to get rid of one of the letters. Pick one. Okay, what if I want to get rid of X? I got to get the same, or I'm sorry, I got to get the opposite on top and bottom. I have four X's on top. I need this to be negative four here. How do I do that? What do I multiply the bottom by to make that a negative four? Okay. So what you do, multiply by a negative two. Do that. So that turn into, I'll do it red, distribute, what do you got? Negative four X plus two Y. And don't forget this guy also. Negative 10. Okay. So here's what just happened. You left the top alone, you multiplied the bottom, and got this. Now, why is it called the addition method in a, or multiplication method? I think you just saw we multiply, and now we're going to add. What do you get when you add straight down? What happens to the x's? Oof, please use proper math terms. And what's left? What's negative y plus two y's? Y, and then what's 13 plus a negative 10? Three. three. Getting tired of doing the same problem? We're going to get four, three again. Okay, but that's how you could solve for y. Then what? How do you find x? Plug it in. Plug it into any equation you like. The blue ones, the red ones don't matter. I think I'm going here. Okay. So now what does that say? 4x minus 3. It's 13. Right. And add three, what do you got? 4x equals 16, which 17 main time makes x equal to 4. Okay. So we did that one multiplying by negative 2. 
But watch, we could have multiplied by what instead? Back over there. What if what? my life? Here we go. Okay, we got rid of X. What if you want to get rid of Y? What do you have to multiply one of them by to make them opposites? They're both the same. Negative one? Doesn't matter, top or bottom. I guess let's go bottom times negative one and you get this. Okay, now I add them straight down. This time, who disappears? Okay, and what are you left with? You get this in your head. 2x equals 8, and here we go again, x equals 4, plug it in, y equals 3, okay? So try at least one of your homework problems using substitution and one of them using this so that you're familiar with it, but honestly, you could do either one all the time, okay? So if you really like substitutions, go for it. Yeah. So pick one of those two, like I said, and when we take your quiz on the uh, day before Halloween, all right, and we give you three problems with calculator, three without. And it's up to you to use whatever you want. Yes, sir. Uh, for the last time I was wanting to make it more to do the little multiplication thing. We multiply it by a negative one. Is that what you're saying? Oh, I multiply by negative two. Oh, we did that the first time. I'm just showing you what if you want to get rid of y instead of get rid of x? Instead of that, I thought it was three as normal. I thought it was negative one as normal. Okay, something went wrong. All right, now the last one. Wake your neighbor. This is the new one. What was method number four? Matrix. The matrix. Okay. And just to take a look again, all right? Make friends with this. When we get there and I teach you how to do it, it's going to be our ref. So to the calculator we go. You might want to re-watch this video of matrix work. Yeah. But here is how you do it. Yeah. All right. Remembering that I started the problem with that, okay, you have to turn it into this. So that's step one. You got to turn this into that. Got to. Okay, so that's step one. Now we're gonna make it into a matrix, All right? Some later this year, we're gonna do a whole unit on matrices. That's the additional thing that honors algebra two gets the, the regular stuff, matrices. Okay, so watch this, all right? Let me introduce you to the, the matrix here on the KUKA later, and you'll see it in blue right above the x to the negative one button, right? You guys have better eyes than me. Yeah, so make friends with the matrix button. All right. First thing you got to do is go over to edit and hit M. And now you're going to play with this a little bit. And I'll give you some steps. Okay. So you already hit second matrix and then edit A. 
We've already done those two steps. Now, here it is. Yeah. You do rows by columns. So look at this thing right here. Make your best guess. How many rows do you see there? How many columns do you see? The only possible answers are two and three or three and two. So which one is it? What does it have three of? Columns. Three columns. All right. Let me take you back to the, the motherland for me, Italia. All right. Lots of uh, ancient uh, columns there. Right now they're all on the ground. But they used to be standing tall. So think of columns as vertical. Yeah. So there's three of those and rows, just two. Okay. So we need two, say two by three over here, two by three. And it better look like the one we're using. Okay. So if you typed in three by two, which is easy mistake to make you'll see right away it's the wrong one right that one goes two columns and three rows okay. so change it to or on top i was changing two by three okay. now put in your numbers and here they are Four, what's the next one here? Negative one, 13. Do the same for the second one and put in what? Two, negative one and five. Two, negative one and five. Okay, now you've got the matrix entered. <laughs> yes. Show it to me. And you're, you're not in the right place. You're supposed to go second matrix and then over to edit. You're on the stats, which was good for regression equations. Because you just did that worksheet, <laughs> right? No. Nope. Right. So here you go. What's going to be next? What's the thing you're supposed to remember? All right. Uh, I want you to quit. So get out to your work screen where it's blank. And then here we go. We're going to go to the matrix. I'll blow this up so you can see it better. But you're going to go back to the matrix store and go to the middle column and find me our rep. Where is it? It's B, right? Don't say. Okay. So matrix middle column, middle column, middle column. See math? Okay. And scroll down until you hit R rep. How do you get from here to the Okay. Quit. Second quit. So that you got blank screen. Yeah. Okay. Now go back to the matrix and go to middle column and find R rep. Hit that. One last trip back to the matrix store, and you're going to grab the very first one, which is matrix A. And then you're going to see this. Let me blow this up. Okay. Now, who remembers what this looked like when we started? What was it? 4x minus y equals 13. 
and 2x minus y equals 5, right? Okay. What does this mean here? What's the first column got in it? What letter? So what does this say? It says 1x plus no y's equals 4. Ring a bell, x equals 4. We've done this problem four times on it. Okay. And what's the other line say? No x's plus 1y equals 3. Okay. So this is called the identity matrix. If you see it, then this last column will give you the answers. Okay, that's how you do it. Let me give you the steps to copy again, and we'll try another one. But that's how we do it. All right. And here's those steps again. Matrix, edit, type it in, rows and columns. Right. You do that and I will get us another problem to do. Write this one down. Yeah. So this will be your you try. And we're going to do it four ways, starting with the matrix. Okay. First of all, is it in the right form? Yeah. yeah. Is it still a two by three? Yeah. So what you're going to do, go to your matrix, type in just the coefficients for that, which are... Okay. Type those in, and if you can do R ref of A, you should be looking at the answer. But let me give you a chance, and I'll come around and help you here. Okay. That's your R rep. Yeah. I've been putting in the numbers. 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 I've been putting in I'll do 
So you did regular but you need it's the one time you just put it. I don't think it's the one time it's clear that I can go back or you want to make sure you see it. And then you can have these in the game. I don't know. Wow, impressive, impressive. So let's do the matrix. Clear my deck here. We got a new answer we're going to start seeing a lot of. And really? Need music for this. <laughs> Reminder to note to self, don't write on the calculator. It's not even colon 13 a whole nother. All right. So teach me, I go where second matrix and I want to edit because right now matrix A is something else. It's the old one. So here's what you got choices of. You don't have to put it in A. I'm feeling like G. Okay. Okay. All right. I got to make G a two by three. And read me those things. What were they? Coefficients. Three. Two. Three. Two. Nope. I was going down. Oh, sorry. Three. Go across. Three. Okay. Um, one. Three. three and then the next one was two and what negative, negative one. one some of you discovered the hard way that you got to use this little negative sign down here instead of the minus yeah. what a world we live in all right and seven. seven okay so now i have the matrix entered that's nice but i go out to my my clear work screen and i want r rep a g this time so how do I do that? Matrix, middle column, middle column, and it's down here at B. Oops. And I, now I got to go back to the matrix store and grab G. And what do we see? What's this thing called again? Whenever you see the cascading ones and nothing else, 
This is called the identity matrix. And when you see it, these are the answers. So what are the answers to comma negative three? Okay. You think you got the matrix then? Yeah. Okay. So now we're gonna do the same problem. You pick your favorite method with by doing it by hand and solve it. Either substitution or linear combo. I made it so that it was set to go linear combo. But if you want to be substitution person, just solve one of them for one y plus and you should be good. Okay. But we should get two negative three again, right? Okay. Yep, same answer, but do it by hand this time. All right. Yep. We just saw the one of us going to tag zero. So that's it. All right. All right. We have to do that. We have to do that for the game days. The answer B is supposed to be three one three two eight one seven. Yeah. Work with me. Which one is it set up for? We said elimination. Which letter would you like to get rid of? Why? You don't have to do anything. Y is ready to go. Add them straight down. What do you get? 5x. Poof to the Y's. And what do you got here? 10. There's your x equals 2, right? So you put that in your answer and you got half credit. And now plug it in, plug it in to any of the equations up top. Which one's probably the easiest one? The top one, because everything's positive. So plug it in. Now you got what here? Three times two is? So you got six plus y equals three. Subtract six, and what did we get as expected? Negative three. 
Okay. So that was linear combo. Okay. And the other methods, let me talk about them, but they wouldn't have been your go-tos. Okay. First of all, you got to be able to tell me this, or we got to do a thousand more problems. What if you want to get rid of X? What do you multiply to get these opposite? What could I multiply the top by? Two. And what does that make this? Six. So how do I get this to be negative six? Multiply by negative three. Okay. So you got to own that skill. Okay. Make them opposite. And so if I do that, now I've got what? 6x plus 2y equals 6, right? And what do I got here? Negative 6. Okay. That way you could get rid of x. That definitely wasn't the easy way. But do you understand? Your goal is to make these opposites. Okay. And we started the problem, they were already opposites for y. Okay. How about calculator graphing method? What would I have to do to both of these before I could plug them into the calculator? Make them y, make them y equals one step. How do I make this one y equals? What about first x? What do I got? Y1 equals negative 3x plus 3. And this one, you might be better off moving this guy. And that's now what? Positive y. And then move seven, and you got what? 2x minus seven. And so if you don't like the matrix, what the heck? Uh, you could plug it in and do graphing. And hopefully you remember the method there. Okay. Plug them in, graph. I didn't learn. Okay. Do you see a point of intersection at two negative three? I hope. Okay. But how, what uh, keystrokes are you going to need to do to find that? Trace. Second, trace five. Enter, enter, enter. And there you go. Okay. So that is a full lesson on systems okay the last thing i got for you are the special cases special cases so here's what just happened already okay all right here's the three possibilities and 99% of the time, you're going to get this. How many times did they intersect? Once. That's going to be 99% of the time. But uh, what about parallel? How many times did parallels intersect? None. They're parallel. They're supposed to go on forever without touching. And then this one always confused me when I was your age. These are two lines that are exactly the same. You would never see them. They just show up as one line. But what do they share? Every point. Okay. So these have names. Okay. I'll give you the names after you write these down. So one solution if they just cross. No solutions if they're parallel. And rather than say all solutions or they share every point. Just write Mandy. You don't want to list them all. All right. And think about this. Okay, here's the three words that go with them. And on your quiz, you're going to have to basically do matching with this uh, graphic here. Okay. So how did, how are you going to memorize these green words and what pictures they go with? Okay, think, think, think. One. If you are one, you are true. And what word might describe you? Independent. 
independent. So if there's one independent, okay? Well, what if you got like, you know, you, you count on your many friends, then you are doing what? You are dependent upon them. And the other one. Okay, none inconsistent. So every problem we've done so far was independent. We found one answer. Okay. So here come the other two that occur 1% of the time. The parallels and the coincidental lines. All right. I'll write this one down. Special cases, two special cases. Yeah. And what method is it set up for already? With your combo or with calculator, you could go matrix, right? With me? Okay. Well, let's do combo. Which letter would you like to get rid of? X, okay. So what do we multiply the top by so that our X's are opposite? Okay. Now, someone, bless their heart, they're gonna say multiply by two. Not wrong, but now you'll have to subtract instead of adding. That's not much tougher, but tough enough that somebody don't make a mistake. Okay, so you're gonna multiply the top right now by negative two, that gives you that gives you negative two plus six, negative twelve. And add them straight down. What do you see? Well, what do you see on the left? Everybody cancels out over here, right? So what's left? Zero. And what's left on the right side, 12 minus 12 is zero. zero. And now here it is, the zero equals zero. All day long, that's many solutions. Why? Because zero equals zero. So what are these? Many solutions, that was the coincidental lines, dependent, okay? And what would it look like in the matrix? Let's go back and fill in, what do we got here? One, negative three, six, and two, negative six, negative 12. So we're gonna go put that one in and see what many solutions looks like is in the matrix. Okay. Matrix store we go. Edit. I think I'll go with B this time. Yeah. So read those to me again. What was it? Two. You got me. Uh, two negative six five. That was what it started with. Uh, no, that was okay. Oh, hang on. Two, hang on. Give me, give me the original one. Negative two positive six negative. Hmm. Now the original one had like a one in it. We'll see. Oh, the original one. Yeah. All right. Um, one, negative three, six. And the bottom had the two, negative six, negative 12, you told me before. All right. So this time, watch this. When you hit RF, do you see the identity matrix? And I need to do. B. Yeah. This time you don't see the identity matrix. So watch this. Most important five seconds of whole lesson today. 
if you don't see the cascading ones and everybody else zero, all you got to do now is identify, you know, is this a true statement or not? Okay, the zero equal one, we, we must have typed something. Else. This was supposed to be true. Yeah, I typed something in wrong. All right, but uh, let me go back and check. Okay. All right, be my watchdog. What did I type in wrong here? Negative 12. Negative 12? Thank you. Struggle bus. Here we go. All right. So now. Do you see the identity matrix? No, but you're supposed to compare the bottom two numbers. Does zero equal zero? We said yes. That means many. Okay. But what if it had said this? The zero equal one, no. Guess what that means? No solutions. Okay. So here, here they are, all three possibilities. If you see the identity matrix, those are your answers. And if you don't, you just got to compare the bottom corner. And it's either a true statement or a false one. Okay. And that is it for today. Powerful lesson. Okay. All right. Have a great one.